So recently, a lot of people have been coming up to me and telling me that I'm bad for only playing with a four-man group and that solo players have it much more difficult when trying to gear up in this game. They've been saying that I'm only making videos for those that are already at the end game. But the problem is that a lot of people cannot get there. And while I do agree that for solo players this game is a lot harder, I also think that uh, a lot of people are taking this argument to the next level and, and they say that it's impossible to gear up and you know, that the game is only for hardcore players. But uh, that, I really don't think that that is true. And I believe that you can still easily max out on gear score and, and get your set items, even if you play without a pre-made team of four players and you play mostly by yourselves. But uh, usually the arguments that I have with those people, they really don't lead anywhere because um, the others can always tell me that I can't possibly know because I've never tried to gear up alone and I geared up before all the crafting nerfs and before they fixed all the loot farming glitches. So yeah, what am I to say then? But with the new content coming out on PS4 now, I decided that I wanted to settle this once and for all. I wanted to try out um, to level up a character and get it to max gear score all by myself. The initial plan of action was to just delete my fourth character that I had on my main account and uh, basically start from scratch without any help. But then people told me that I would have it easier in matchmaking because players might recognize my name and so they wouldn't kick me even if I had a lower gear score. And then some players of course didn't trust me and they said that I could just, you know, swap over some good items from my main character uh, through the stash and then not show that to you guys. So uh, what I actually ended up doing is uh, creating a whole new Uplay account buying the Division Gold Edition again, and then using that account to do the challenge. This way I could have a different name and I couldn't swap over those items. Now after I did that, I was also told that playing on the PC platform is a lot easier because, uh, you know, you can use a keyboard and a mouse. Um, I was also told that not everybody has a microphone, so using a microphone would also not be a fair test. And in addition to that, people have also said that they didn't like PvP, so using the Dark Zone to get gear quicker would also not be fair. And while I think that some of these are a little bit far-fetched, uh, I do believe that uh, they wouldn't be telling me these things without a reason, and, uh, you know, something can at least be taken out of these things. I really wanted this test to be as fair as possible, and this in addition to starting a new account and uh, playing with that new character, um, I added some more rules to the list of what I can and cannot do. So just to sum it up, um, here are the rules that I set for myself. First up, I have to play the game, of course, by myself, without a team. And the only times that I am allowed to team up is when I use the in-game matchmaking feature to search for players, but only in four-player orientated activities. Second rule is that I'm also not allowed to use a keyboard and a mouse and have to do the entire playthrough of the game on an Xbox One controller. Also, I am not allowed to use a microphone. I am not allowed to go into the dark zone. I am not allowed to add anyone on my friend list that I happen to meet in matchmaking. And last up, I am also not allowed to tell people what to do using the text chat feature. Basically, I'm not allowed to tell people what to do, but I can say small things such as hey or thank you or bye. The beginning wasn't too bad actually, the enemies died really quickly, way quicker than anything I was used to from how the game currently is. I'm not gonna lie, being so squishy, it did take some time getting used to, especially when I finally got to Manhattan and did some of the, you know, the level 4 and the level 5 activities. But it was nothing that I couldn't overcome. I did Lincoln Tunnel for the extra 10% experience early on in the game, and then started completing the other story missions along with many of the side missions. I got to the Police Academy, Lexington Event Center, the Queen's Tunnel Camp, and to be honest, I completed them all with quite a lot of ease. Just make sure that you are at the recommended level, or that you're maybe one or two levels below it, and the whole game feels like a breeze. I did run into some issues in my playthrough, such as some server errors or bugs that would make me get stuck on a ladder, but uh, regardless of all of that, after 11 and a half hours of playtime, I had taken down the final boss and completed the storyline. Then, fast forward one hour later, and uh, you know, after completing some more side missions, I had 100% completed my base and leveled up my character to level 30. I officially reached gear score 0. Yeah. Obviously, at this point, I was not ready for the incursion yet. I wanted to do Falcon Lost, but I of course couldn't even do harp mode because I needed at least 160 gear score. And this was the first time in the game that I actually had to think about what to do next, because um, I kind of forgot, how do I get from where I am at right now, at zero gear score, to where I need to be to complete Falcon Lost? 
Remember guys, I was not allowed to use the Dark Zone. And I'm not gonna lie here, I actually had to look back at some of my older videos that I created when the game just came out to figure out what I had to do. And then I of course remembered that we have missions, storyline missions in a uh, hard mode, challenge mode and now even heroic mode. It was such a long time ago that I actually did these that I completely forgot that they existed. Uh, but I remember that back in the day they would guarantee level 30 high-end items, so surely um, that was the first thing I was gonna try out. I headed over to the Lexington Event Center because that's the mission that takes the least amount of time. So I put it on Heroic and started the matchmaking. Now, I know, I'm not stupid. Um, at this point, my character was in no position to complete this type of content. Um, but seeing how my gear score was literally 0, 0, 0, I was kind of hoping that other people that I would meet in matchmaking would think that my character was somehow bugged and that it was displaying the wrong amount of gear score. So I start up the matchmaking, first guy that joins in, no luck, he is 252 gear score and he leaves just as fast as he joined in. But uh, the second time that I matchmate, uh, I get an invite, uh, I join in on two guys, both with 200 plus gear score. Uh, and the guy that left my session also joins in a minute later, also through the matchmaker. And well, guess what guys? I am NOT getting kicked! <laughs> yeah, what a, what a surprise, I didn't expect this either. So I'm kind of sitting here, smiling as they start the mission and I'm pretending to help out by shooting at the enemies from a distance. At this point, I don't really know if these guys think my gear score is bugged, I don't know if they're just nice and willing to carry me, but all that matters to me is, is that we're completing this run and I end up with three 204 weapons and my gear score just goes from 0 to 71 in, in just 10 minutes. And I know, I know that gear score doesn't really mean anything, but I also know that I have to be at least 160 gear score to do Falcon Lost on hard mode. And my strategy for gearing up is very, very simple. Matchmake, the hardest content you can do, and simply hope for someone that can carry you. At this point, I'm even planning to do the same for Falcon Lost. Just get to 160 gear score and hope for a carry. But uh, yeah, the Lexington run, it went well. It went so well that I decided to do it again. Now at this point, I get kicked a few times. Uh, actually, with 71 gear score, it didn't work as good as with the zero gear score. But after a while, I do find a group that doesn't kick me. And thus, I was able to complete the run again. Boom, 94 gear score. And I do it again. This time I end up with 113 gear score. So I do it again. Um, this time the fourth run. Now at this point I'm actually spending a lot more time trying to find a group that doesn't kick me than actually playing the mission. But you can see from this that doing it in this way, just searching for a group that doesn't kick you, is so much faster than doing hard mode 10 times and then challenge mode 10 times. I'm pretty sure that had I done it that way, I wouldn't be 113 gear score. But anyway, it is going so well that for the fourth run, I decide to throw in a little bit extra. For the first time ever, I used the chat box feature to type in GOLD in capital letters. I hope that this way, um, in combination with my lower gear score, the rest of the squad will think that it is my first time doing this and maybe the first time that I'm seeing these gold items. And this, I'm kind of hoping that they're willing to share some of their items with me because of those reasons. So we complete the mission, I pick up my loot, it pushes me to 159 gear score just below the minimum requirement for hard mode Falcon Lost. But then, just before I'm about to redo the matchmaking and leave the group, two out of the three teammates literally drop all their items on the floor. They give me an M1A, a G36, a whole lot of gold items, and it pushes my gear score up to 180. I'm feeling like a master manipulator now. So believe it or not, but uh, 14 hours into the game, and I am gear score 180, meaning that in just one and a half hours of playtime, doing Lexington Event Center on Heroic, trying to find people that do not kick me, I went from gear score 0 to gear score 181. That's, that worked out quite well. Was I lucky? Yeah, maybe. I was maybe very, very lucky. But I'm pretty sure that if I just did that for 4 hours instead of 1.5 and, and maybe wasn't so lucky, I still would have found 4 groups of players that wouldn't have kicked me. But now, it was time for Falcon Lost. I was initially going to look for a carry, but it seems that I'm already at the recommended gear score, even over it by one point, so I'm thinking that this incursion really should not be an issue. So I matchmake, and at first I'm having some trouble, you know, there's people leaving and 
people saying mean things in the chat to me because my gear score is so low. Uh, but then, after nearly an hour of searching, the legend himself joins my game. The greatest of them all, the one and the only Maiku Newell. Now the thing you have to know about my good old friend Maiku is that not only does he have gear score 243, he also tells everybody what to do. He can walk really, really fast. He can melt through any NPC and he can even walk through walls to get his ammo back. I'm telling you, this guy is a force to be reckoned with. Now, I don't want to say that uh, Mr. Maiku here carried me, but uh, yeah, bottom line is, guys, I got carried by a hacker on my first Falcon last run. The best thing of it all, when we were done, two out of the three teammates, including Maiku, again, dropped all their loot for me to pick it up. I almost felt bad for reporting the guy after that. But anyway, with just one run, I had reached 211 gear score. The recommended gear score for challenge mode on Falcon Lost was 200. Again, I was quite well above that, so I tried challenge mode. It didn't go quite as planned, we got wiped a few times, which instantly resulted in the team leaving and me having to matchmake again. But on the third attempt, I think it was, we made it uh, and we completed it. Again, because of a few guys that carried me. And after that run, I got the gear score 217. Heroic mode is a, a little bit of a different story though, because even if you find a very good player that is completely min-maxed, it will still be very hard for that person to carry the rest of the squad through. Level 35 NPCs just have so much health and damage and carrying becomes quite a hard thing to do, not something that you can expect uh, from a group of bugs. So I had a choice at this point, I could either spend all my time in the hard mode for Falcon Lost and try to min-max my character around 220 gear score, or I could just search for the other activities in the game that would actually help my character get stronger instead of artificially boosting my gear score to not get kicked. I chose the latter option and this is actually where I started to run into a lot of trouble, because I had to find out that none of the other in-game activities really allowed you to get ready for the heroic content in the game. I got the free supply drop that came with the season pass, which was nice, it gave me a couple of 240s. But then I tried the underground and it was quite a disaster, quite the opposite of what I heard about, you know, the underground being the best thing for the solo player. The first time I did it was on normal, I was like, yeah, okay, this is cool. I started the challenge mode one and uh, I had to come to the conclusion that it was a complete disaster. The NPCs on challenge mode are level 34 elites, like, are you kidding me? I have to fight NPCs that strong by myself in order to get 240 gear? There was no way I was going to be able to complete even one mission. So I went back to hard mode underground, but that gave me items that didn't increase my character stats at all. I already had a few 240 items and now I was getting 214s. They're going from level 32 purple enemies to level 34 elites. Like, where's the middle ground? As the sodium levels began to rise and my enjoyment with the game began to go down, I eventually ended up doing a whole lot of Dragon's Nest. I will save you all the details of how frustrating that was with people getting stuck on objects and people not knowing what the Four Horsemen farm is, so I'm now forced to sit through this 45 minutes of useless fighting. You know, I didn't want to leave the team either. And now, after 21 hours of playing, I have finally reached my 243 gear score, but really, I don't really have the desire to try and continue to build my character. I don't know what it was exactly, I mean, I know that I cheesed most of the game's content, I basically got carried, but if that didn't happen, I would just have been grinding hard in challenge mode. During my playthrough, I came to the realization that I really disliked the idea that you have to min-max a character's gear to be able to do the content for the next level of gear. Because I can have 200 gear score on my character and on paper be quote unquote eligible for the challenge mode incursion. But if you do not have a 4 piece bonus from a gear set and armor rolls on the holster, the knee pads and the vest, I will essentially die to 1 or 2 hits from the NPCs anyway and I will not be able to contribute to my team in any meaningful way. Instead of cheesing it and getting carried, what the game actually expects me to do is to do hard mode 20 to 25 times until I have enough 214 items with good rolls to then do challenge mode 20 to 25 times so I can get the exact same gear but then the 240 pieces so they have higher main stats. 
And then of course the same thing counts for heroic mode. The thing is, when I was playing with a team, I didn't really notice all of this because uh, with the communication and the ability to share the rewards that you get, you set each other up for a good enough build way faster and you can get away with doing the higher level activities while not being geared enough. But trying to progress this way, you know, without a squad is just incredibly mundane. And that's coming from a player who was basically boosted half his way through. Here's my point, right? If you're not doing the heroic mode content, you are essentially grinding for gear that will be useless when looking at the bigger picture. If you're doing hard mode, it doesn't matter if you're getting good or bad rolls. Even if you get a god roll tactician's backpack with all the stats that you want, it doesn't matter. I mean, don't get me wrong, a god roll item is incredibly nice to have when you are doing heroic mode incursions and the items are 268 gear score, but getting god rolls on a 214 backpack just, you know, it just doesn't matter because you're gonna replace that anyway. As a result of this, what uh, a lot of people, including myself, are essentially doing is trying to skip that grind for gear that doesn't matter. And they try to gear up just enough to be able to do the endgame activities so that they can finally start playing for gear that actually matters. Do you see where I'm going with this? Because as a result of that, you have a lot of people joining in the matchmaking that are completely not ready for that type of content. Now, other players that also matchmake quickly caught on to this and uh, very rapidly started associating this with low gear score. And this, at the top of every bracket for matchmaking, you have people kicking anyone with a lower gear score. And at the bottom, you have all the lower gear score players trying to inflate their gear score, hoping for a carry. They are hoping for the opportunity to play for gear that also matters in the long run. You have to see it like this. If players are not doing the content on heroic mode, anything that they will get as a reward is nothing more than a better chance to not get kicked next time that they want to do an activity for gear that actually matters. And I think that is an inherent problem within the game. I just don't think that the whole item level system was too good of an idea. Call me crazy on this, you know, call me crazy, but I believe that it would have been better uh, for the game if every difficulty of an end game activity dropped the best gear in the game. But then, if you would put the endgame activity on a higher difficulty, there would be more of those items. So let's say in this case the item level would have never increased and 214 gear set items would have still been the best. You would get one 214 gear set item on hard mode, you would get two 214 gear set items on challenge mode, and you would get three 214 gear set items for doing it on heroic. Now, of course, right now it wouldn't really work because you wouldn't be able to kill the level 35 NPCs with just 214 gear set items, but uh, skill the NPCs back a bit and the problem would be solved. This way, even if you were to do Falcon Lost on hard mode, you will still get gear that actually matters in the long run. And those who did hard mode a few times already and have that practice, they have a couple of those gear set items, they can do it on a higher difficulty to get more of those items and try to start min-maxing their character. Because that is really what this game is about. This game is not about the gear score. What you have to understand is that I can have my 700k toughness tanktician built with 204 gear score on my character. I would wear this and I would get kicked while I would probably carry them if they would let me play. But in another situation, I can have over 240 gear score, but have a complete shit character, but then still be accepted in a heroic incursion. Matchmaking right now is all smoke and mirrors and the only reason behind that is is because everybody is smart enough to realize that doing hard and challenge mode is a complete waste of time because the rewards essentially do not matter in the long run. Imagine having to min-max your level 24 character with the correct purple items to be able to do the level 25 content. Why would you ever want to min-max level 24 items? They're just gonna be a waste in the long run and you're wasting your time. Wouldn't you just want to matchmake and hope that some level 26 player joins in and saves you hours and hours and hours of your time? I definitely would. I just think the whole system doesn't really work well. So yes guys, in conclusion, I think it is very possible for the solo player to gear up. But it's definitely much more difficult than it is with a team. You basically rely on someone with a higher gear score to carry you through a lot of the content. Otherwise, you're just grinding away for items that really don't really matter. I just believe that the feeling is very strong for a lot of people that they are wasting their time doing those activities because any items that they might receive, they will never be anything more than, as I said, 
a chance at not getting kicked for the activities that do actually reward the player with the items that matter in the long run. I'm repeating myself now, I'm going off script, so uh, let's just end it here. That was all for today's video. I want to know what you think about this, I want to know what your thoughts are on my possible solution for this or what I'm thinking about the game in general. And also, if, uh, if anyone happens to be willing to buy this account, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say no. Uh, it has the season pass. Anyone? Um, anyway, I will see you all later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later.